the, the stories are crazy. It's it's just if you're being honest and if you believe in God, but you also know that people are full of shit, you have to put all this stuff through a filter. You just sure. have to. And it doesn't mean that there's no God. <laughs> of course. It doesn't mean that. It just it means there's probably something in these stories, but we have to be real careful with what that's from. Well, Joe Rogan says that you have to put these Bible stories through a filter. Now, I am sympathetic to what he's saying here because he's essentially highlighting the sinfulness of man. I mean, mankind is imperfect. We, we are capable of great evil. We have all seen it. We've experienced it. We, we can't always be trusted to do what is right. Sometimes we don't even really know what is the right thing to do. So I get that Joe is skeptical when he reads or hears about some of these very crazy or bizarre stories in the Bible. And I agree that some of these stories that take place in ancient times certainly are very bizarre. They're very strange. Uh, sometimes they, they border on the unbelievable. But to tell you the truth, I hear a lot of stories in this life where I think to myself, there's absolutely no way that this is true. And then I find out with absolute certainty that it is. I mean, just some very bizarre stuff, some evil stuff that I never thought was even possible. And then I find out that it certainly is. So I don't really think that the bizarre or the craziness of some of these stories should be seen as evidence that they aren't real and that they aren't accurate. For example, the guest on his show tells a story about Judah and Tamar, and it's filled with evil, it's filled with sexual immorality, and right after that, Joe says, yeah, some of these stories are crazy. But I think about the evil in our own culture. I think about the, the sexual immorality in our culture today. I mean, is the story of Judah and Tamar really that crazy in light of what we have seen in our own culture today? I mean, I don't think so. In fact, I'll put a link down below to a recent video I did on Judah and Tamar if you want to know more about that. But back to my original question here. Is Joe right? Is he right that you have to put these stories through a filter? Well, he's right if it is only men that wrote the Bible. But what if men are not the only ones responsible for writing the Bible? You see, the Bible itself claims to be God's written word in passages like 2 Timothy 3, 16-17. It says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And things are made even more clear for us when we get to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Peter writes this, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture comes from the prophet's own interpretation of things. That's important. Now, many people think that a prophet predicts the future, that that's what he's known for, and at times he does. But if you look carefully at the way that prophets are used in the Bible, the key thing about a prophet is not simply prediction. In fact, most of the time it's not prediction, but it's the interpretation of events. A prophet explains what history means. So God's activity is in need of interpretation. The meaning is not always self-evident. For example, there were many tribal migrations in the ancient Near East that would take place. There were different tribal people that were moving from one place to another all the time. So nobody would have ever really even known that Israel's exodus from Egypt into the promised land was anything other than just some normal uh, tribe moving around in those times. Unless Moses had been raised up by God to record God's activity and to interpret it and to explain it. You see, no prophecy came about by the prophet's own interpretation. When a prophet explains the meaning of history, he's not giving his own interpretation of things. No, he is giving God's interpretation. That's what the scripture says. Men spoke as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So they weren't passive instruments then. They, 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 weren't, they weren't 
uh, they, they weren't robots. They were used by God and they were guided. When they spoke, they spoke from God. They were his mouthpiece. So when you read the Bible, you are reading the words of the living God himself. The Bible itself testifies to this. Men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So like, like ships carried along by the wind, the prophets, they raised their sails, so to speak, and they were obedient and they were receptive and they were not robots in any sense. They were dealing with the reality of their own history and God worked through their unique personalities. He worked through their understanding of things and they wrote down exactly what God wanted written down. He guided and made sure that the truth was put down. So the picture in this passage is not one of strict dictation. It's uh, certainly not one of, of scrolls being let down from heaven, but it's a picture of human prophets that were blown like a ship by the wind, carried along by the Spirit. So they were steered to interpret events that, so, so that it was both their writing and God's writing. Men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The doctrine of inspiration is that God took real men with different personalities from a variety of social settings, from a variety of backgrounds, and the Holy Spirit cooperated with them and providentially wrote down what God wanted written down. So the reason I trust the Bible then is because I don't believe that men are the only ones that wrote it. Yes, men are prone to error. Yes, they're prone to wickedness. Yes, they are unreliable, but God is not. Now, I understand that biblical faith feels risky. It may feel risky to believe some of these things. And yes, men are evil, but a careful reading of the Bible along with an open heart and an open mind. If you read the Bible that way, I think that you're going to see that his hand is all over this thing. And while some of the stories are strange, most of the Bible stories are not strange. And it doesn't seem to read like myth. It seems to read like truth. So I encourage you to take time and read the Bible with an open mind and humbly, humbly surrender to the potential that God has actually written this down. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's been 2,000 years when you take the New Testament, Kyle. I mean, how do we even know that what they wrote down then is what we have now? Well, for that, I'm going to point you to a video I've done on preservation that God has preserved his word over time. I'll put a link in that uh, for that video down below. Well, thank you so much, and God bless you in a way.